How you guys doing this morning? We're going to begin with some singing. We're going to sing, the first song we'll sing is, uh, Oh Come All Ye Faithful. It's in the book, and there are handouts. We should have gotten one of these. We'll pick it up. We have the uh, lyrics, maybe not the music, but we do have the lyrics. And in the book, it's number 550. And in the book, we're going to sing the first, and I believe the last verse that we decided. I mean the second, first and second verse, of course. Yeah. Give me one sec here. I'm going to get my pitch pipe. That way I don't pitch us into the stratosphere. We'll start with, they'll come all you think. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful.
you can do, especially in small groups, it's a lot of fun to, to sing like that. Uh, the next song we're going to do is called You're the One. This is a song that we sing directly to God. Okay, so I'll lead us. In other words, I'm gonna, it's, it's a call and response. But this is one that you're singing to the Father. So if you want to raise your hands, if you want to do whatever you want to do to connect with God, you do it. Um, so the song is You're the One. <coughs> Excuse me. My phone keeps locking on me, so I can't get in my pitch back. Lord, the people praise you. Lord, the people praise you. Lift you up and raise you. Lift you up and raise you.
Um, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with you. Amen. So the Lord is with us here, and we can do great things through him. Let's keep gathering. Let's not give up the fellowship. Um, let's grow the fellowship Amen. and really enjoy what God has given us, this, this wonderful gift that we get here on church and so we get to be with him in heaven. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to say, uh, um, hand it over to my wife. Do you want to welcome or say anything? To anybody? Yes. So, so I'm going to welcome yes. everybody also. My name is Mara, in case you didn't catch it. Um, but I just want to point out to you, for those of you visiting with us today, there are these cards. You can find them back there at the table if somebody didn't already give them to you. But if you could please fill one out. It's just got some basic information like what your name is, an email or phone number that we can contact you. Um, and then just any thoughts that you have about coming here and being with us today. Um, and then there's this little check box in there that says, I would like to learn more about the Bible. All right. yeah. Yeah. So please take your time to fill this out for us. It really is so helpful. And again, I think Paul put it perfectly. This is such a great vision of what it's going to be like for us in 2020. And I think the other part too, though, is that to keep growing. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. So in the spirit of growing and spreading the message, uh, if you do Facebook, I actually don't. I'm probably one of the few people that doesn't. Um, you can apparently check in. Um, so if you want to check in, if you know how to do that, feel free to check in. Let people know that you're worshiping here. And uh, then you can silence your phone. I keep mine because it's my Bible as well. Um, it's my literal Bible, not my like, Bible. And with that, I'm going to say a prayer, and we're going to get to a, a wonderful service. <laughs> Father God, thank you so much for this time together with you, time to get to together with each other and fellowship and praise you. Um, Lord, I just pray for the service. I pray for this uh, winter that's starting out with a bang. Keep us all safe, please, Lord, um, for the next six months as it's going to snow. And um, we just pray that the words today come from you, every word out of my mouth, every word um, that comes out of anybody's mouth is from you and glorifies you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I'm sorry, I completely dropped the ball on the Facebook thing, because I am on Facebook. If you, go, if you look up the Worcester Church, that is how you find us on Facebook. It is the Worcester Church. So I'm sorry I dropped the ball on that. All right, we forgive you, Mara. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's been a great service so far. Oh, you agree? You agree with me? Amen. Woo!
song before communion will be number 423, Jesus is Lord. And I'm supposed to say something about the communion cups, but I forget what I was supposed to say. <laughs> the communion cups are made of glass. So please don't throw them away. We're going to reuse these. So don't throw away a few. Showing mercy, be that light that he needs me to be. Amen. 
But through it all, I noticed one thing. No matter how many times I walked away from my father and I forgot about him, and I was content wallowing in my own sin, my God was always faithful and patient, and he remained with me no matter what. My highs and my lows, God was always there with me. And that's, that's just so beautiful when you think about it. My father says in Romans 8, verses 38, 39, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let that marinate for a little bit. Amen. Let that sink in. His love is so incredible. He will never leave you. Our Lord's love is endless and unimaginable. It's pure God love. In fact, our Lord loves us so much that he went to the cross for us. He reminds us of this in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. My father made me a sinner whole again. My Lord washed me of my sin and made me new again. I no longer must wallow in my sin anymore. My Lord went to the cross and died for me because he loved me. My Lord wanted to wash away my sin so that I may live in eternal heaven with him by his side. That's an amazing thought. Yes. So to answer that question, what does the cross mean to me in one word? Everything. Come on. It means everything to me. I'd like to leave you with this thought. As I was reflecting on this speech in my life, one poem kept coming into my heart, and it was the footprints in the sand. I first heard this poem as a young man, and I truly feel it applies to my life, and I'd like to take a moment and share it with you today. One night, I dreamt a dream, and I was, as I was walking along the beach with the Lord, across the dark skies, flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to me, and one belonging to my Lord. After the last scene, my life flashed before me. I looked back at my footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest point, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk away with me, all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of four friends. I don't understand when I need you the most, why would you leave me? He whispered, my precious child, I love you and I will never leave you. Never. Even during the trials and testing, when, I, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was that when I carried you. That exemplifies what my father has done to me my whole life. When I look back, that poem. He's always been there for me. In my darkest of darkest, my lowest of lows, my dad has carried me. It's just an amazing thought. And I am so thankful for him. And that I repay him. I can't repay him, but I go out there and I try to be that light for him. Amen. For those people who are hurting out there, that mission field. And, and, and I'm thankful for that opportunity. And I said, Lord Jesus, thank you. Use me however you want to use me. I am your servant. I am your instrument. Let me go out there for you, Father. Um, so in prayer communion, Lord, I'd like to say thank you for your faithfulness, for your love, for your wisdom and patience, and for dying on the cross for us. You're truly amazing, Lord Jesus. I pray these things all in your name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. That concludes the uh, communion portion of the service today. Uh, take a moment to just thank Ozzy for sharing. <laughs> Before we continue, uh, right now we're going to transition into the um, contribution portion of day service. So please join me in prayer for the contribution. <laughs> Heavenly Father God, thank you once again for this opportunity, the opportunity to uh, come together in communion. God, we're so grateful to live in a country where this is not, um, I wouldn't say it was it's not difficult, God. Um, it's, we're not persecuted the way that they are in some other countries. Uh, God, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters in these countries that are suffering uh, very bad persecution right now. Some people are having to meet in basements and secrecy uh, under the uh, threat of having to go to jail. Uh, God, we are forever grateful that we were born here. We don't have to do that. But God, as we give money right now, we know that we're given in your name so that we can bring the gospel to people like these. One who is difficult to hear the word. And God, we know that this, this is just a little bit of something, but that it goes all over the world. Right now, there's a sister studying the, uh, the Bible in Turkey. Count the cost, God. It's amazing. Count the cost of Turkey. It's incredible. God, we're just so grateful for all these stories that we hear all over the world about how your gospel is truly moving. God, please use this today to really move the world. God, we love you so much. And it's in Jesus' name, praise Amen. All right, so we got some announcements. Yes. Okay, Christine got the announcements. Right. Come, on, Christine. Come on, Christine. So, good morning, everybody. Morning. I'm so glad everybody's here. I um, have a few announcements. One is that uh, we will be back next Sunday in Shrewsbury at St. John's at 10.30. So, join us there. We are also, on the 11th, this Wednesday, having a women's midweek service. Yes. Yes. That's right, at 7.30 at St. John's. And on the 22nd of this month is the Worcester Church's Christmas service mm -hmm. at 10.30 at St. John's in Shrewsbury. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we are still, we still have the angel trees in Shrewsbury. So uh, next Sunday, when you come, if you have not yet taken one of the little tags from the tree, Please do so. These go to um, uh, children who and families who are staying at uh, Sherry's house. Sherry House. Thanks, Sherry's House. Yes, and they, you know, they they're it's it's rather can get rather financially difficult for them at times because they are there. Uh, they can lose their jobs when the kids have cancer. They're being treated up here in this area. Uh, they can lose their jobs at home, wherever they've come from. So things get hard. So we do this them out and what you want to do if you take one of those tags is to bring back the gift the following Sunday because that's the last Sunday we can bring them mm. before Christmas unwrapped with the tag attached mm. okay also special missions contribution we are still collecting it yep. our goal for the Worcester Church is 85,000 we are at 75,000 we can do it we can do it yeah. yes so please feel free to put that in you know each service that we are here or in Worcester, in an envelope marked Special Missions Contribution, or you can put that on your check. Mm -hmm. check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's it. If I have forgotten anything and any of you guys know that I have, please let me know. Ozzy, that was a great comedian. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I, I gotta say, that was the heaviest those of us who have been around a while, I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> guys, let's stand. I am I am thrilled to have the Heatons here. Yes. We go way back. Like I was telling somebody before the crust of the earth started cooling, hey. we were friends. So, so yeah. So this will be fun. Uh, we're going to do a song called Let It Rise. Did you guys know this song? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So if you know it, um, we're doing an a cappella version, which is a little different timing. So I apologize for people like me who don't have great timing, who have to learn this. Uh, so I'll do the best I can with it, but we'll see. Ooh, I'm on this, though. All right. So we'll start with Let the Spirit. 
Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. sort of the mission mindset of this group of people. You know, I, I was reminded of uh, the, the tribes of Israel, like Manasseh, Reuben, and Gad. They were on the east. Their, their land was on the east side of the Jordan. But they spent time on the west side of the Jordan to help, you know, conquer the land. But they wanted to settle back to their home, you know. And I kind of feel like I don't know if there's a river between here and uh, <laughs> maybe not, definitely not the Jordan, but uh, like a river between here and Worcester. But uh, I sort of feel like you know, okay, here's here's a group of people that really love where they live, yeah. want to 
reach out in yeah. that area yeah. and have a great impact. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I think of Manasseh, Reuben, Gad, yeah. and I think of you guys here. So, uh, so anyways, yeah, we're just uh, by way of a little background, uh, Worcester and Springfield, the Pioneer Valley sort of combined with working together in planning to plant uh, the church here and to help uh, you know, set, set you guys up for success in this area. So it's kind of great to keep that connection going. And we've been praying for you, Pioneer Valley uh, sends greetings. And uh, so I'm just gonna share a little this morning about some things that, that I've been working on. Hopefully it'll, it'll help you all. You'll get something out of it. Um, uh, on the theme of, of intimacy with God. Oh, intimacy God. with God. And so you can turn over to Psalm 118. We're going to stay mostly in, uh, did I say 118? I'm not 119. Uh, Psalm 119. There's uh, quite a bit longer, quite a few more verses in Psalm 119. I'm also gonna I'm gonna ask uh, about some participation here. Could I who who feels like they would like to read some scriptures this morning? I have four I need four people to read scriptures. Hopefully this isn't too complicated, but um, the you know verses from Psalm 119. Um, if four of you could read, and I've got a hand out here, and there's a number on the top of the page, uh, and what you'll read in that order. Okay, I got two ladies. How about some guys? Uh, all right, Rich. Somebody maybe other than Ozzy who is already getting to us so much. So, uh, later on, I'll prompt you, uh, and then if you're a one, you read the one scriptures, if you're a two, you know, and just successively, okay? So I'll prompt you right. at the time when you're going to do that. Thanks for being willing to do that. You know, a, a couple of years ago, uh, I'll just give you a little background on where I'm coming from today. I was challenged about my relationship to God, and and uh, a brother said, well, hey, read and, and pray uh, through the scriptures. You know, pray the scriptures, and that will enliven your your prayer life. So I started praying through Psalm 119. And I was praying through the Psalm uh, every day. I did it for, I don't know, several months. And uh, in doing this, it really, you know how the Psalms are, they just really help you connect yes. with God. Yes. Hopefully it'll yes. and, you know, inspire you this morning a little bit. It certainly did me. It, it really enlivened my prayer times. And, but I was also struck with um, the heart of the psalmist that was really came across in uh, Psalm 119. Mm. His incredible heart for God mm. and what a heart he had for God's work mm -hmm. in particular. And I began seeing, of course, you know, and this is sort of uh, makes sense why I don't have a hard time connecting because I'm kind of analytical. So what I ended up doing by reading and praying through the Psalms so much is I started to see a, a process or almost like a formula in, you know, it sort of kind of jumped out at me. You know how it is when you read something frequently and you really put your heart into it, you start to see some trends for approaching your relationship with God. So that was, that's some of the background here. Now Psalm 119, Again, yeah, this is pretty well known. If you know this already, please indulge me. But, uh, you know, Psalm, this, the book of Psalms covers a wide time frame. It's generally believed, though, that Psalm 119 was one of the later Psalms. It was written uh, later in history. The author is thought to be a relatively young man. Some, some have conjectured that it was actually Ezra, uh, but uh, that, that's unknown. But he, whoever he or she was, wrote, uh, was an apparently afflicted or persecuted mm -hmm. in a pretty significant way when he, when he wrote this prayer. 
there's 31 references, 31 references in Psalm 119 to the persecution or affliction that he was dealing with. So it's obviously a major theme of this psalm. Right. It's not going to be a theme that I'm going to talk about this morning, but that's definitely something that comes out as you read through Psalm 119. The other incredible feature of this psalm, and you probably know this, is, is that the psalm, Psalm 119, is actually an acrostic. It's, a, it's, a, it's based on the Hebrew alphabet. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, okay? So there, uh, each stanza, each eight verse stanza is dedicated to one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. There's 22 uh, letters, there's eight verses in each stanza, eight times 22, there's 176 verses in Psalm 119, it's the longest chapter in the Old Testament, in the Bible. So the poet, obviously, this, this man or woman of God, was creatively using an, you know, an inventive way to, to glory in God's word. That in and of itself is pretty inspiring, that he would think of doing such a thing. So it's been referred to as the ABCs of praise, power, love, and the use of God's word, the ABCs. And as I prayed over uh, the psalm over and again, uh, I, I emphasize in my thoughts and in my focus, verse 18, which says, open my eyes. <coughs> open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. And I, I really begged God, I begged God through this verse many times to open my eyes to see things that I'd never seen before. And I would say, God is faithful. Amen. Amen. He opened my eyes to a lot of things, I think, in this psalm and continues to do so. Uh, he, the psalmist here, focuses like a laser in Psalm 119 on God's word. Uh, but but I started to see these trends, like I said. They were, I, so I started, I'm going to categorize every verse in this psalm. I, I saw like six different categories that these psalms tended to fall into, each of these verses. Uh, and, and I was going to count the number of verses that fell into each category, just to see his focus. You know, all these kinds of exercises I was kind of doing. I know I'm a mess, right? <laughs> uh, so I'm not even going to tell you what the six are. So if, you, if you're interested, I'll tell you later. But the, third, the, the last one was one that I'll focus on this morning, which was, how does the psalmist feel? How does he feel about God's word? I'm a, I'm a, like I said, kind of a technical, I'm an engineer by training, um, sort of a, you know, I, feeling is not one of my gifts, no, I'm not being, I'm not in touch with my feelings, so if that, this, is, this is great because this is going to help me. So um, I'm going to focus for a few minutes on, on that, that love that longing, that delight right. that the psalmist had Amen. in Amen. God's word. And specifically, intimacy with God. And I thought, instead of the ABCs, I'm going to do the XYZs. Mm -hmm. XYZs of intimacy with God, uh, just to change it up a little bit, all right? So all right. the first one, X, and I'm sure you're going to... And I had to do some gymnastics to come up with this. <laughs> All right. It's, you know how you end, you know, you send a love letter, you end it with what? XO, 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 right? Yes. Right. That's my first point. Okay. The emotion that you would express at the conclusion of a love letter, amen? Right. So I'm, at this point, I'm going to ask, you know, uh, for those that I've uh, 
Uh, and there's the first session, the first reading, the first page. So starting with number one, right, to read through these nine verses one at a time, please. And please, passionately, amen, uh, as much as you can, if you feel like you need to stand up, go ahead and do that. And then who has one? Was that Christine? Okay. Mike? For I delight in your commands because I love them. I reach out for your commands, which I love, that I may meditate on your decrees. Who has three? The law, uh, the law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Mm -hmm. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Because I love your commands more than gold, more than pure gold. Your promises have been thoroughly tested, and your servant loves them. See how I love your precepts, preserve my life in accordance to your love. I hate and detest falsehood, but I love your law. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. Great job. Let's give them another round of Grasp. I don't know if you can grasp the passion that the psalmist expresses here. And I, I, I like some of the even the gestures. I reach out for your commands. Oh, how I love your law. I love it more than gold. More than wealth. More than financial, more than my 401k. I love your law that much. Your promises have been tested. Did you catch that? Your promises have been tested. What's that say to me? God's word works. Yes. God's word works right. for life, for relationships, for marriages, for parenting, for my job, for eternity. God's law, God's word works in our lives. It's right. removing itself. You know, I, I've been a disciple for over 40 years. And I can say unequivocally, in my life, God's word works. It's right. proven itself. Amen. I would be divorced, I'm sure. I would have failed relationships on my own. I would not have known how to parent at all. Uh, I wouldn't even, you know, have a purpose in life. God's word works if you right. just has helped me so much. Amen. I obey because I love your word. Amen. Do not forget this point, that God's word changes lives. It does. It changes lives. We take that for granted. And I'm asking you this morning, love God's word. Love God, love God's word for changing us. Amen. Amen. One thing I did forget to say I can't believe it. Uh, in my introduction, is just with the way God has blessed our family. I have, we have my wife and I have three daughters. We, uh, they're they're awesome. We have great relationships with them. We have uh, four grandkids. I'm only saying five because one due in uh, next month. So uh, I'm praying for for that fifth grandchild. But the blessings are unbelievable. Amen. And we, you know, it's to the point where you have to pinch yourself to, to have the kind of life that we have. And it's all because of God. That's right. But, but give Him the praise Amen. for His Word. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, I guess I would fall into a category of an old, as an older Christian. Some of you may be as well. But just, just try to remember 
how much God's word meant to you early on. Early on. Remember that you, you like loved every morsel. You know, you just marveled at God's word. You were amazed. You couldn't wait to just like find that next revelation. That's really what God's word is intended. We cannot lose that attitude. And if we've lost it or we're fighting to keep it, you know, don't give up. You know, get it back. Go for it. Be, you know, just diligent in trying to to get that attitude back. So, exhume the truths on the theme of the X. Exhume the truths from God's word. Excavate it. You know, that in verse 130 in Psalm 119, it says, the unfolding of your word, you know, uh, teaches me. Now, that tells me that you've got to work at it sometimes. You've got to, it's not right on the surface. You can just pluck it out. There are many verses, there are many themes that are like that in yep. the Bible. But the really deep the connection that we need to get with God, we need to dig for it. Right. Yeah. We need to work for it. We need to exhume the truths of God's word. Yeah. You know, we uh, used to have a couple dogs. We had them for uh, like 15 years. We had these dogs, and sadly, last year, but inevitably, 15 year old dogs, we had to put both of them down. Oh. So, but one of the dogs, a mutt, and he was, he was a lab mix, a lovable dog, but he was a digger. <laughs> you know, our backyard was like full of holes. Uh, it was like a moonscape. Uh, it, would, and it was like to the point where, you know, I tried to fill the holes. And it was useless. I mean, we would just go dig more holes. Um, and last spring, or this, this spring, you know, was the first spring that we didn't have the dogs. So Kathy says, we got to fill in this backyard. I can't tell you how many loads of dirt, topsoil, I had to bring in to fill all these. So the dog didn't. He didn't move the dirt off site. I mean, it was still back. The holes were there. So we had to just bring it back. And we're trying to remediate that backyard. But he did. He, you know, Kathy just said, we need more topsoil. And it was driving me nuts. But the dog, he was just a digger. Yeah. I don't know what he was digging for. <laughs> <laughs> But I did maybe new smells, but he was passionate. He was passionate about digging. And I think if, if only I were that passionate in digging God's word, you know, begging God to open my eyes so I could see wonderful things in his word. Crave that new insight, that new concept. Give God the glory, the love uh, that when you find it. And when you're taught something new in God's word, you know, give God the love. Amen. So, Amen. exhume it, but exude it, okay? Exude the love of God and his word. First of all, in your prayer life, imitate the psalmist's passion for God. You know, if, you, if you're having, if you're struggling with passion in your prayer life, please, you know, read Psalm 119, read a, your favorite psalm, and try to uh, imitate the passion of the psalmist. Right. Uh, it's, it's been incredibly rejuvenating for me. I, I go back, although I started this a couple years ago, I don't read or pray Psalm 119 every day, every day now, but I, it's definitely my go-to. Yeah. Right. You know, it's definitely my go-to. and I, uh, I, I keep doing it to strive for that intimacy. You know, rather than, you know, just mumbling through your prayer or just maybe reading off a prayer list or something from a prayer list, which is good. I mean, we need prayer lists. I'm not trying to discourage you from that. But demand from yourself an intimacy with God. And exude not only in your prayer life, but in your interactions with others. Give God the glory for the truth in his word, for the, for the beautiful things that you see in God's word. Uh, 
you know, I, I confess, sometimes when I find, you know, something new and exciting in God's Word, uh, I'm prone to think, of, you know, I'm amazing. You know, I bet there's nobody in 2,000 years who's made this connection. You know, I'm such, it's so awesome for me to find that. You know, probably nobody has ever. No, God is awesome. God is awesome. It's there. It's there for us to find. It's just there. We need to, to search it out. We need to dig for it. Uh, we need to exhume it. We need to exude it. In, in our relationship to God. So that's the X of our intimacy with our relationship. The Y. The Y. Yearning. Yearning for God and His Word. I'll read a few verses here. My soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times. That's verse 20. Verse 40. Verse 40. How I long for your precepts and your righteousness preserve my life. Verse 81, my soul faints with longing for your salvation. My soul faints. This guy is so passionate. But I have hope in your word. In verse 131, I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commandments. Hear the yearning of the psalmist. Meditate on it. Grasp how he yearns for God in his word. Do I have this kind of heart, this kind of longing? To, to, the, the, to feel that deferred blessing when I haven't been close to God or in his word. You know, again, a dog, Louis. Uh, when he was digging, like in the middle of it, when he was digging, could not be distracted. <laughs> could not be distracted. Now, parenthetically here, I did a terrible job disciplining this dog, okay? I, I confess. I did a terrible job. That, you know, the Caesar, the TV dog trainer, I don't know if you've ever seen that guy before. If he would have come and checked out Louie, he would have said, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to have to put him down. Oh, no. <laughs> no hope. But he wouldn't be talking about Louie. He'd be talking about me. Because <laughs> I couldn't, I didn't train him. But Louie, you know, he'd get his head and his shoulders and his legs and he'd be like in there, that way, you know? And when he would do that, you know, I'd yell at him, Louie, stop that. It, would, it wouldn't phase him. I would try to physically, sometimes, physically grab him. And he'd usually, ah! And he'd grab him. Lost a hand. I would offer him his favorite treat. A bone, uh, anything, a walk, anything he would normally love. Once he started digging, there was no way to stop him. He was that, he was that, you know, uh, focused on, on his task. And so I, I was thinking, how easily am I distracted? You know, when I'm it. Was I anything like that when I'm looking at God's Word? You know, it's quite the op opposite, really. I mean, I might be distracted. Like, I get up, or I, you know, check the scores from last night, or, or the news, or I, my Facebook, or Twitter feed, Instagram. What, you know, I'm distracted with the responsibilities of the day. You know, I'm so focused on, you know, what I've got going on that day, to the point that I would squeeze the time out with God. Uh, but, you know, again, use the psalmist to motivate you. Imitate the longing, the longing of the psalmist. Follow his example. You know, again, this whole acrostic, you know, of what, how creative to go after God's word that way, to, to think about him, to meditate, and, and be creative about 
about how you go after God's word. You know, if you look at the Psalms, there's Psalm 119. There were different things that I would do throughout this, this time of really focusing. So uh, it says, okay, I pray, I get up before dawn and pray. So I would pray through Psalm 119 before dawn. Uh, verse 48 and 62, it talks about in the, in the middle of the night, I would seek out for you. So I would set my alarm at, you know, like 2 o'clock in the morning. Just to, just again, to be creative in focusing on my relationship to God. And I would pray through the psalm, Psalm 119. Verse 164 says, seven times in a day, I will reach out to you. So, okay, yeah. Seven, seven times in one day, I prayed through Psalm 119. You know, again, just, these aren't really, you know, they're creative, just Nothing creative, I'm just imitating the psalmist. You know, practices for, for helping me long for God's word. So the other thing I did is I, I came up with my own uh, identifiers of God's, you know, um, descriptive words for God's word. And I came up with 26 descriptive words, one for each letter of the alphabet. You know, so I wrote my own song, my own poem, with 26 stanzas. Again, imitating the psalmist. And I'm not trying to, but these were great things for me to do to help me focus on God. Uh, recently, I took, uh, two weeks ago, I took, uh, I, I took a 24-hour retreat. Okay? I, you know, it took some planning. I took a day off work. Uh, a vacation day, but I had no agenda, no goals. I tried to go in with a, just a, a blank slate, and and I was just armed with my Bible, uh, with a journal, and and I, I did have a process. I had a process for for going after some scriptures, but tried to be very open minded about. So, I mean, the process was reading, meditating, prayer, and contemplation. It's actually like an old Catholic uh, uh, formula called Lectio Divina. And you can look it up and they'll, they'll help you process how, how to go after studying scripture. So I did this for like 24 hours. And even in the middle of the night, again, I got up in the middle of the night, 3 o'clock, that morning and and read through, prayed through Psalm 119. It's a couple weeks ago. But it was so refreshing and powerful for me to be able to do that, to just a blank slate. Empty. Let God, let his Holy Spirit, what do you want me to see from this scripture? What do you want me to see about my life? It was so refreshing and powerful. So intimacy with God demands our longing, our yearning. So the X, the Y, and the third is zeal. Zeal for God's word. So if I could ask those, uh, the, the readers again, uh, to, to read through those scriptures, would be great. And you could give the, the site as well, right? The verse. So this one is verse 14. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. Verse 16. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your work. Verse 24. Your statutes are my delight. They are my counselor. Verse 35. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Verse 69. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Verse 70, their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in the Lord. Verse 103, how sweet are the words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Verse 111, your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My flesh, verse 120, my flesh trembles in fear of you. 
I stand in awe of your laws. Mm. Verse 136, streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. Mm -hmm. Verse 139, my zeal wears me out, for my enemies ignore your words. Verse 143, trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands give me delight. Mm -hmm. well, what do you mean? Yeah, thank you. The psalmist delights. He's emotional over God's word, over his relationship to God. He states his love for the word 11 times in Psalm 119. He expresses his joyful emotion about God's word almost 30 times. Just in Psalm 119. His zeal for God's word is so palpable. It's so real. As you read through and just contemplate what, what he's striving to accomplish as far as zeal in his relationship to God in his word. You know, I was thinking about you guys and your love for your area. You know, and wanting to see God's kingdom grow here, Amen. where you live. Right. It takes a vision, doesn't it? Yeah. You've got to have a vision to see something that's not there. Yeah. To see something that, you know, is God's vision. Not just yours, not just uh, some leader of the church, but your vision for your neighborhood, for your city, for the whatever it is, 80 to 100,000 people in Lemonster Fishburg area here. You know, to have that vision, it takes a zeal. It takes a focus and a zeal to have that kind of vision for your area. And I commend you for it. It's awesome. It's inspiring. Thank you for having a vision for this area and for Amen. the many souls that can be one here. Right. You know, and I think about you know, this joyous, heartfelt response that the psalmist displays. Contrast that to verses 69 and 70, which our brothers and sisters read. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, verse 70, their hearts, their hearts are callous and unfeeling. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling. You know, it's easy to maybe step back and say, well, they, they've got issues, you know. They're so hard-hearted. They, they, they don't let God's word penetrate. But I'm convicted by this. As well, I can I can get a hardened heart where nothing penetrates. Maybe day after day after day, I do my quiet time or my time with God, or maybe I you know miss a few days, which is which is you know understandable, but nothing penetrates. Maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you draw your line in a different way. Or maybe you would never think of missing a service. Or you wouldn't think of missing a midweek or whatever, but week after week, nothing gets into your heart in the quiet times. Nothing motivates you. <coughs> nothing convicts from God's word. Alarm bells go off in my head when I get, when I feel myself get to that point where nothing is penetrating. Not, I don't feel motivated. You know, I, you're waiting on somebody to maybe give you a good sermon or a good talking to you before you're, you're really motivated. If we're waiting on someone else to motivate us, our, our perspective is not, is not right. Certainly, we, we need each other. We need to motivate one another. But we can get that callous and hard heart as well, where nothing penetrates. It reminds you of, doesn't uh, Jesus' quote, from Isaiah, Matthew 15. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts. It's the spirit.
spiritually insecure place to be. Yet, you know, when I study and pray through Psalm 119, I, I feel, uh, you know, my bar for spirituality and intimacy with God has been far too low. Mm -hmm. You know, when I compare it to this, this brother's heart for God and his word. And so maybe as I share these things, maybe you've heard something. Or maybe you've seen that there's something's resonated with you. So I need to take it higher in my intimacy with God. I would, I would encourage you to you know, follow that prompt. To take it higher. Take that passion, that love, that longing, that zeal for God's word. And, and strive to put it into your life. You know, as I conclude, the passion and closeness to God and his word, it navigates us to one place. It takes us, it takes us to one place. John 1.14 The word became flesh. flesh. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. All of this love, longing, and zeal for God's word, it directs us. It directs us to the person of Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. The triumphant conclusion of loving God's word becomes concrete and real in Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the end game. We often pray and study for some other purpose, don't we? Maybe, and it, it's good. It's it's needed. We maybe need to uh, prepare for a lesson or become more equipped, or we need to prepare for a study we're having with somebody, or leading a. a you know, a, 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 a devotion. Help us counsel someone. These are all noble and legitimate goals. But ultimately, the goal of our times with God needs to be intimacy with Him that leads us to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
that, we're going to have some food. Um, we have to rearrange the table, so just give us a few minutes to set that up. But before we get to that, I want to uh, shout out some thanks here today. If it wasn't for this woman's uh, urgency to have us uh, do service here today, we wouldn't even be here today. Um, she came up to me and offered this wonderful speech, and she followed up. She actually had to run me down to make sure that we met here. And for that effort, I want to just ask Chris to come on up. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, here we go. Let's do this. 